I'm sure we're all very I'm sure we're all very aware of the argument surrounding AI art right now. And most of the debate I've seen surrounding that is honestly it's really interesting. There's just a belief that human-made art isn't necessary and that AI can create art, right? But that's a bit of a juxtaposition because the AI art needs to be fed uh, human art. It didn't come up with it by itself because it needed the art of humans to even understand what it was supposed to Frankenstein together in the first place. Just thinking about AI art in the first place, it's a soulless alternative to just paying living human beings who are talented and deserve money for their craft. There's no thought put into it, therefore it's lifeless. But it was when I saw a certain defense that I realized what this desire to use AI art stems from. When I saw people say that AI art is their best way to create art because they aren't naturally talented, that's when I realized it stems from a modern insecurity of art. So I'm going to be explaining the concept of learning art as well as why human-made art is where true art stems from. So me personally, I've always drawn, but I only really got into the craft when I was about nine, I would say. I have a previous video on this channel where I redesigned my old OCs, and in that you can see where I started out with before I really decided to draw. Talent is not something you're born with. It takes time and effort to get to the place that you're at, you know? The issue is that not a lot of people want to spend the time to get to the point where they're quote unquote naturally good at something, because they don't have the patience to actively wait around for that. They want the results now, which is why they turn to AI art. It seems like a simple solution, but it exposes the very reason why it really can't replace artists. So this section of the video is going to focus on the very popular question, what makes art, art? And it's a valid question, especially looking at some things people consider art. A banana duct tape to a wall is considered art. The Mona Lisa is considered art. Where do these two things intersect? Why do they? Do they really? The answer is yes, they do intersect, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to start off by telling you what my favorite art piece is in the history of art, and when I tell you why, I'll tell you why that art piece is art. My favorite piece of art is called A Huguenot. I'm now going to read what this painting is about. The title of the painting refers to the historical event of St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in 1572, a day in which Huguenots, French Protestants, were massacred and killed in Paris and in some other parts of France because of their religion. That day, some Huguenots managed to escape from Paris by wearing white armbands, shielding themselves from danger by showing Roman Catholic symbols. This painting depicts an intense and meaningful scene of two lovers engaging in a romantic embrace. The young man on the right of the picture is the Huguenot of the title. At a glance, the scene may seem sweet and familiar, but looking closely, a dramatic detail can be seen. In fact, the girl is trying to get her beloved to wear a white armband, in a desperate yet gentle attempt to save his life. Being a symbol of loyalty to the Roman Catholicism, the armband would protect the young man from being killed, but he refuses to wear it by gently pulling it off with his left hand, the same with which he cuddles and embraces the girl. Now I'm not going to read the whole article, but if you're interested in learning more, it's linked in the description. Why did I tell you all of that? Because I want you to be aware of the choices made in the art. I want you to be aware of what the symbolism was, because that symbolism tells the story. Artists make decisions to further the story or the point they are trying to make, but those decisions are made out of free will, out of an artist's belief that those decisions should be made. In other words, it is the humanity, or what makes the artist human, that makes it art. So let's talk about the banana on the wall for a second. A lot of the time, when people are getting praised for things, you'll see people say, well, I could do that, and then you'll see a lot of other people respond to that with, but you didn't. And it's basically that. Really, anyone is capable of anything. It's just that individual person's decision that led them to making that. So what I mean by that is like, why didn't Julius Caesar create Batman? He really could have. Because look at Batman, right? Wealthy child watches his parents get murdered and vows vengeance against the guilty, dressing up as a bat to scare them. Literally anyone could have come up with that. So why didn't Julius Caesar? He's one of many people, right? If anyone could do something, he is a person who falls under the anybody category, right? 
Well, the really simple answer as to why is because Julius Caesar did not care about creating Batman. He had absolutely zero incentive. If you went back in time and told him the concept of Batman and then asked him to write it on paper, he would say, no, why would I do that? So when you look at the difference of somebody making art and somebody not making it, it essentially boils down to somebody who did it and somebody who didn't. That somebody who didn't do it either didn't do it because it never crossed their mind or it did and they just decided not to do it. But let's go back to um, somebody who does decide to do it. Between people who decide to do it, they are different and will have different perceptions, therefore they will not create the same thing. It's why Batman has been able to evolve as a character, because his different writers, for better or worse, had different perceptions of who he should be and what he should represent, and acted accordingly. It's why Bill Finger's Batman never faced the Court of Owls. It's why Ben Affleck's Batman and Robert Pattinson's Batman are different. There were different events in my life that led me to draw things that you haven't drawn. And even if you did draw it, it would be different, because our perceptions of it would vary due to our different experiences as people. So, next up. Do you ever hear the phrase, an artist looks like their art? Or, um, a while ago there was a trend where people would ask what their art says about them. This is where I'm going to hammer the nail with my point. The reason AI art is not art is because it removes the humanity that the artist put into the art. An artist's art is a representation of themselves. Let me explain using myself as an example, so a very brief history of my life. So, um, growing up, I primarily watched shows like Spongebob, Power Rangers, The Fairly Odd Parents, Pokemon. Um, I know that on the computer I had watched every single version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on YouTube, and these were the shows that made up my early childhood. At about nine years old, I got into Batman and was inspired by Batman the Animated Series, as well as um, the Batman to try and write my own comics. My middle school years became defined by my interest in Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Batman. The year before COVID hit, I became interested in a series called Young Justice and became incredibly obsessed. I had tried to replicate Young Justice's art style as it was the first time I had genuinely cared about the appearance of my art. A little bit of bullying by my peers also pressured me into being self-conscious about making my art anatomically correct, which I had struggled with. I had also become very obsessed with the Harley Quinn animated show as well as the She-Ra reboot. Drawing Poison Ivy was the first woman I ever drew, and I was very inspired by the She-Ra art style. Though I didn't really watch it, I was also inspired by the Voltron Legendary Defender art style, and would try to replicate it sometimes. Uh, in the summer of last year, I became obsessed with Sailor Moon and took a heavy inf inspiration from that style as well. And I had also taken the Batgirl New 52 uh, line of comics and had tried to redraw as much of that as I could. Those were just like the small things, not even the small things, those were like the larger things that I thought of. Um, obviously there was a lot of like very small things that happened in my life that also affected um, my perception and therefore affected my art, but that's like the main stuff that I'm thinking of right now. So that's a story that I promise you nobody else in the world has because that was my story, the events of my life. And trust me, there are a whole lot of people in this world, but none of them lived my exact same life. So we're going to look at one of my OCs and this is the part that I'm relying to hammer in the nail. So this is my OC, Taya Grayson. I created her in July of 2021 and she is inspired by Artemis Croc from Young Justice, Piper Wright from Fallout 4, Taya from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dick Grayson from DC Comics. Her hair was based off of Dick Grayson from Young Justice, her shirt was inspired by Lilith from The Owl House, and the rest of her outfit was just a fashion that I thought looked cute at the time. Originally she was supposed to be half Vietnamese, half American in reference to her inspiration from Artemis Croc, and her story of being a political activist who fights for the American way was inspired by Piper Wright. But because this story takes place in an alternate timeline where Japan had dropped the atomic bombs on America instead of vice versa, I decided it would thematically make more sense for her to be Japanese. But then, because Bombshells takes place in Texas, I had also decided she should be half Japanese, half Mexican. Just because of somebody who lives in Texas, I know um, some people here who are half Mexican and then half Asian descent, so it's just sort of a reference to my own personal life here. 
everything about her character exists because I was inspired either by my own life or my creative liberty. If I put in a description of Taya into an AI generator, um, it would not have her hair, her clothes, her Mexican half of her ethnicity, because those were all things purely inspired by me. When you make AI art, you're removing the sole aspect of that art, the thing that makes it unique, the thing inspired by the most unique thing in existence, you. The universe is going to exist forever, this planet, this human race. We've existed for a very long time, but I guarantee you that you are a one and done deal. You are never going to exist ever again, except for in the brief moment in time you do exist. It's through the diversity of other people that you can recognize yourself for what you are. It's through seeing how others are similar and different from you that you form an identity. If everybody was the same, nobody would be anything. If everybody was nice, nobody would consider themselves nice because, duh, of course you're nice. Everybody is nice. Art is the same way. It's that aspect of it that makes it art. Art is the depiction of humanity from a human perspective. It's what connects the banana on the wall to the Mona Lisa. That's the problem with AI art. It's this desire for the art with no patience to create said art. You didn't even try putting any soul into it. You spit out a prompt, first of all, which is no different than commissioning art, of which case, commissioning art is not creating art. That is asking somebody else to do it for you. Next, the program is stealing other people's art off the internet and Frankensteining it together. The very brief summary of my inspirations, as well as my specific reasoning for designing Taya the way I did, isn't stuff I mention on a daily basis. It's not common knowledge. If an AI generator was to get a hold of my Taya art, it wouldn't know why I associate her with the color blue. It's because I envision her as a very calm person who has a fluid personality, and fluidity reminds me of water, and I associate water with the color blue. But the AI wouldn't know that, so we'll just add that in with no purpose, no reasoning, no method. And that's why it's not art. I also understand that a lot of people genuinely do not think they are capable of art. They're insecure and don't believe in their own strength. I know what it's like to feel like you don't have the reins of your own life. I know what it feels like to think that some things just aren't meant for you, that it's a path you'll never be allowed to explore. I know what it feels like to think that's not something I'm meant to do. But what I'm here to say is that if you feel a calling or an inspiration or a desire, those things are indications of who you are. If you wish you could be an artist, that's because that's what you want to be. And I get that art is hard. It's not like my first art Pete was a farmer and his wife. Nobody would have told me I could beat Picasso in the ring, and I knew that. Art, like any skill, is something you just have to learn and improve over time. A lot of things are going to be difficult, but you just have to work towards it and give it the time and patience it needs. You have to put in that effort even if you're absolutely dog shit at first, and anybody would be able to look at it and know you haven't been doing this for long, that can't matter. If you're doing something for yourself, I promise outside judgment will wash away once you get over that initial insecurity, because you'll know you're doing it only for you. With all that in mind, and hopefully sending you off with the courage to be happier with who you are as a person, and not giving in to selfishness as much as you were prior, I really sincerely do hope that this video did some good for you, and if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, or dislike whichever you fancy. Subscribe if you want to see more um, random rants over things I'm passionate about, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.